Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Anupma Biology Classes. In this video, our topic is photorespiration and casulation acid metabolism. This video is taken from Plant Physiology Series, Part 5th of Chapter 14, CBSC Class 11th. Now, let's see here the lecture overview. So, in this video, our topics are photorespiration, biochemical mechanism of photorespiration, Importance of photorespiration, casulation acid metabolism, in short CAM, CAM, and differences between the photorespiration, photosynthesis, and true respiration. Now let's start the topic. Here our first topic is photorespiration. So what is photorespiration? Earlier in the year 1920, Otto Warburg observed that presence of excess oxygen in the atmosphere inhibits photosynthesis in green algae. Later on, this inhibition was observed in several green plants. Thus, inhibition of photosynthesis by high oxygen level was termed as Warburg effect. However, the inhibition was observed mostly in the C3 plants. Here you can see the C3 plant that is wheat, soya beans, rice, potato plants etc. The C4 plants were hardly affected by varying oxygen concentrations. Extensive studies were then carried out to explain the Warburg effect and these studies led to the discovery of photorespiration. The process of photorespiration was first demonstrated in the tobacco plants by Decker and Tio in 1959. Since then, it has been reported in a large number of plants, particularly those which perform C3 cycle. The process is defined by the Cortco in 1963 that photorespiration is an extra input of oxygen and extra release of carbon dioxide by the green plants in light. Now, let's see here the biochemical event of the photorespiration that means biochemical mechanism. So, before discussing the actual biochemical mechanism of photorespiration, let us discuss the first step of C3 cycle in some detail. This is the reaction where RUBP that is ribulose 1,5-bis-phosphate combines with oxygen carbon dioxide to form two molecules of 3-phosphoglyceric acid in presence of enzyme Rubisco. The enzyme Rubisco has the remarkable property of fixing not only carbon dioxide but also oxygen. Hence, the name of same enzyme performing the dual role is RUBP carboxylase oxygenase or in short you can say Rubisco. However, the enzyme has a much greater affinity for carbon dioxide than for oxygen. Now, this is the biochemical pathway of photorespiration. And here you can see that ribulose bisphosphate carboxylase, the main enzyme of the Calvin cycle that fixes carbon dioxide, acts as ribulose bisphosphate oxygenase under low atmospheric concentration of carbon dioxide and increase concentration of oxygen. In presence of high concentration of oxygen, the enzyme RUBP oxygenase splits a molecule of ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate into one molecule of 3-phosphoglyceric acid and 2-phosphoglycolic acid. So here you can see that in presence of oxygen and RUBP oxygenase enzyme, here the ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate break down into 2-phosphoglycolic acid and 3-phosphoglyceric acid. Now this 2-phosphoglycolic acid loses its phosphate group in presence of enzyme phosphatase and converted into glycolic acid or glycolate. In this picture you can see this. After this, this glycolic acid synthesized in the chloroplast. Here you can see that this functions perform in the three part that is the chloroplast, peroxisomes and mitochondria. So this is the first part where the RUBP is converted into the 2-phosphoglycolic acid and 3-phosphoglyceric uh, acid. 
after that this uh, 2-phosphoglycolic acid is converted into uh, into the glycolic acid or glycolate then in after synthesized in chloroplast as an early product of photosynthesis it is then transported to the peroxisome here you can see that peroxisomes and the glycolic acid reacts with oxygen and oxidize to glyoxylic acid and hydrogen peroxide with the help of enzyme glycolic acid oxidase so here you can see that this glycolic acid is converted into glyoxylic acid and h2o2 release so this glyoxylic acid you can also say that glyoxylate oh. now the glyoxylic acid is then converted to an amino acid that is glycine so before this uh, this conversion you know that here you can see that h2o2 so this h2o2 is destroyed by enzyme catalase and here because of destroying the water molecules release and oxygen oxygen molecule also so h2o2 is converted into h2o and o2 now let's see here that the glyoxylic acid is converted to an amino acid that is glycine by the transamination reaction catalyzed by enzyme glutamate glyoxylate transaminase now after this this glycine is transported out of the peroxisome into the mitochondria now see here that means conversion of the gly glycine and here you can see that this glycine then converted into the serine so here the whole process is the amino acid serine returns to the glycine is transported out of the peroxisomes into mitochondria and here the two molecules of glycine interact to form one molecule each of serine carbon dioxide and nh3 so the co2 is then released in photorespiration from mitochondria the nh3 released during the glycine decarboxylation is transported to cytoplasm or chloroplast where it is incorporated into synthesis of glutamic acid now the amino acid serine returns to peroxisome where it is deaminated and reduced to hydroxy pyruvic acid which enters into c3 cycle so here you can see that the amino acid serine returns to peroxisome where it is deaminated and reduced to hydroxy pyruvic acid and finally to the glyceric acid that is serine plus glycoxylic acid which forms hydropyruvic acid and glycine now now this hydroxy pyruvic acid is converted into glyceric acid or glycerate and this is the final enters into the chloroplast where it is phosphorylated to 3 phosphoglyceric acid which enters into the c3 cycle and the and this is the whole process a whole cycle of the photorespiration which performs in the three structures that is the chloroplast peroxisome and mitochondria so this is all about the photorespiration now after this what are the importance of the photorespiration so if we talk about the functions of the photorespiration photorespiration removes toxic metabolic intermediates photorespiration protects from photo inhibition photorespiration supports plant defense reaction photorespiration is intimately integrated into the primary metabolism now significance of photorespiration photorespiration is definitely not a win from a carbon fixation standpoint however it may have other benefits for plants there's some evidence that photorespiration can have photoprotective effects help maintain redox balance in the cells and support plants immune defense so the process of photorespiration interferes with the successful functioning of the c3 cycle in c3 plants 
In these plants, some oxygen does bind to enzyme Rubisco and hence carbon dioxide fixation is decreased. Moreover, there is neither synthesis of sugars nor of ATP. Instead, it results in the release of carbon dioxide by utilizing the ATP produced by photorespiration. Thus, photorespiration that occurs in the C3 plants but not in C4 plants is a wasteful process because as much as half of the photosynthetically fixed carbon dioxide may be lost into the atmosphere through this process. Now, after this, a new cycle which is known as crassulation acid metabolism. So what is crassulation acid metabolism? Certain plants, especially succulents, which grow under extremely xeric conditions, fix atmospheric carbon dioxide in dark since the process was first observed in plants belonging to family crassulaceae. Like example, you can see here that is in crassulaceae family. Bryophyllum in this picture you can see that after this calanchoe then sedum etc. So it was termed crassulation acid metabolism. Similar metabolism have been found to occur in plants belonging to cactus that is opuntia, orchid, then uh, patuleca and pineapple families. All these plants which carry out crassulation acid metabolism are referred to as camp plants. The most characteristic feature of these plants is that their stomata remains open at night in dark but closed during the day in light. Thus, camp is a kind of adaptation in succulents to carry out photosynthesis without much loss of water. The metabolic pathway of CAM involves acidifications which occur at night and deacidification which occurs during the daytime. During night, the organic acid content of the CAM plants increased and the pH of these cell sap decreases. Whereas during the day, the organic acid content decreases and pH of their cell sap increases. Similarly, the storage carbohydrates increase during the daytime and decrease during the night. So, see here the metabolic pathway of CAM. So, what is the metabolic pathway? At first, the, here you can see the schematic representation of acidification in dark and deacidification in light in crassulation acid metabolism. So, at first in case of night, that means in dark, when the stomata are open, the carbon dioxide combines with the phosphoenol pyruvic acid that is PEP to form oxaloacetic acid that means OAA in presence of enzyme PEP carboxylase. Now this oxaloacetic acid is subsequently converted to malic acid in presence of enzyme malic dehydrogenase. And the reaction occurs in presence of NADH, which has been produced in glycolysis. Now, the malic acid produced in dark as a result of acidification is, is stored in the vacuole. Here you can see that malic acid is stored in vacuole, it means in low pH. In case of light during the daytime, when the stomata are closed, the malic acid is decarboxylated to produce pyruvic acid and evolve carbon dioxide. This process is termed as deacidification. The pyruvic acid may be oxidized to carbon dioxide by the Krebs cycle or Calvin cycle or may be converted to phosphoenol pyruvic acid. The carbon dioxide released by deacidification is accepted by ribulose bisphosphate and fixed to carbohydrate by the C3 cycle. So this is all about the crassulation acid metabolism. Now after this see here the differences between the photorespiration, photosynthesis and true respiration. So what are the differences? 
photo respiration occurs in the green plants in light while the photosynthesis occurs in the green plants in light and the true respiration occurs in all living organisms in light and in dark also photo respiration primary substrate is glycolate formed from rubp in case of photosynthesis substrate is carbon dioxide and h2o in true respiration substrates are carbohydrate fat and proteins in case of photo respiration which is occurs in most of the c3 plants photosynthesis occurs in all green plants and the true respiration occurs in all living organisms photo respiration intracellularly the process occurs in the peroxisomes in association with the chloroplast and mitochondria while the photosynthesis occurs in the chloroplast and true respiration occurs in cytosol and mitochondria in case of photo respiration the process increases with increasing concentration of oxygen and decreasing concentration of carbon dioxide in case of photosynthesis the process is inhibited with the increasing concentration of oxygen and the true respiration the process saturates at 2 to 3% of oxygen in the atmosphere and beyond this concentration virtually no increase occurs in case of photo respiration hydrogen peroxide is formed during this process while the h2o2 this means hydrogen peroxide is not formed in the photosynthesis and true respiration photo respiration here the phosphorylation does not occur while the phosphor photophosphorylation occurs in case of photosynthesis and oxidative phosphorylation occurs in case of true respiration so this is the end of video in which we knew about the photorespiration casulation acid metabolism importance of photorespiration and differences between the photorespiration photosynthesis and true respiration the next upcoming video in case of photosynthesis will be on the factors affecting photosynthesis so if you understand this video please like and share it and subscribe to my channel anupma biology classes if you have any questions any queries or any suggestions you can ask in the comment section below thank you for the watching